In this tutorial, we will be creating this apple pie artwork in Blender. So as I record this video, it's almost Thanksgiving of 2022. And then of course, after Thanksgiving in December comes Christmas. And so I thought it would be really fun to create this apple pie render for the holiday season. And if you have any Thanksgiving or Christmas themed tutorial requests, then definitely let me know in the comments. And you can also check out my Christmas Blender tutorial playlist with the link in the description to watch more of my Christmas themed tutorials. So in this video, we're going to start by modeling the apple pie, and then the materials for the apple pie will be procedural. So we're going to be creating a procedural apple pie filling, and then we'll also create a procedural pie crust. And then of course we'll set up the scene and we'll do the lighting and the rendering and do some compositing to get this finished render here. Now I'm going to be using the Cycles rendering engine in this tutorial and I would definitely recommend using Cycles because we are going to be using some displacements in the node editor and I'm also going for realism and so Cycles is much more realistic than EV. If you'd like to help support this channel and purchase the finished tutorial files then you can get that over on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, links are in the description. And then just one more thing before we we start, I wanted to let you know about the Physical Starlight and Atmosphere Blender add-on. Physical Starlight and Atmosphere is an amazing Blender add-on for creating realistic skies and sky lighting. I've used the add-on myself and I highly recommend it. You can customize the sun, atmosphere, stars, clouds, fog, and more. The add-on also provides some outstanding sky presets, such as daytime and sunset, fog and haze, Mars, and even retro wave. You can also change the time of day just by rotating the sunlight. Check out the add-on with the link in the description, and by purchasing the add-on through my link, you'll be helping to support this channel. Now the materials for the apple pie will be procedural, but I am going to be using this Photo Studio Broadway Hall. So this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com, links in the description if you'd like to download it. And I will be downloading the 1K HDR version. And we're gonna use this to get some nice realistic lighting for the final scene. And then also for the wood table, which the pie is sitting on, I'm going to be using this wood 050, and this is a free wood texture from Ambient CG again links in the description and I'm going to be downloading the 4k jpeg version and then once you download this you'll get a zip file and you can extract the zip file to get the textures all right so here we are in blender and my screencast keys will be right down here in the corner so you can see what buttons I'm pressing so I'm just gonna start by pressing the a key to select everything let's hit the X key and then click on delete always make sure you delete the default cube so we're gonna start by modeling the pie dish. So to do that, I can press Shift A to add, and let's go here to mesh, and I'm going to add a circle. And then I can press the period on the numpad to zoom into the circle, and I will press the tab key to go into edit mode. Now I wanna bring this up, so I'm going to hit the one on the numpad, that is gonna to go to front view, and I can hit the G key to grab, and then I can hit the Z key to bring it up on the Z axis. And I'm going to bring this up so that it is about three and a half grids tall. So you can see right here, Blender has some grids. When you look on side view or front view, you can see there's some grids. I'm just going to make it about three and a half grids tall. So I'm now going to hit the E key and that is going to extrude out the selection. And then I can hit the Z button again to bring it down on the Z axis and just stick it there right on the red line because that is the center. And then I can hit the S key to scale this and I'm just going to scale it down a little bit and just something like that is good so there's a little bit of a slant there and then I want to fill a face here in the bottom so I can press the F key that will fill a face so I now want to select this top loop here and I want to extrude it out to give the pie tin some thickness so I'm going to hold down the alt key and just select that loop of vertices right there so just alt select that loop and you can see the entire loop is now selected and I can press one on the numpad again to go to front view and then I want to see this in the wireframe so I can hold down the Z button and then move my mouse to the wireframe view. So I want to extrude this so I'm going to hit the E key but then I want to scale what we've extruded so I can hit the S key right after that and I can just scale this down I'm just going to make it about that big. And then I want to extrude this down, so I'll hit E again, and then I can click down with my mouse wheel to constrain it to an axis, and I'm going to bring it down on the Z axis. You can also just hit the Z key to bring it down, and I'm going to stick it about there, and then I want to scale the entire thing down, 
something like that. So now we just have some thickness there for the pie tin. And then if I hold down the Z button, go back to the solid view, I need to fill a face here, so I will hit the F key. And I can press the tab key to go back to object mode. So we now have a very simple pie tin. Now I wanna give it like a little bevel to kind of smooth out the edges, and then I wanna shade it smooth. So select the object, and we're gonna go right over here to the modifier properties. And let's click on add modifier, and here under generate, I can add a bevel bevel. So the bevel modifier is going to give a bevel there on those edges, and I can take this amount here and I can turn this down. I can also hold down the shift key as I drag the amount to make my movements more sensitive. And I just want a tiny little bevel there on the edge. And then I'm also going to turn the segments here up to two so that there's a bit more geometry. And then using the object context menu, you can shade this smooth. So I use the right click select in Blender. So I hit the W key and then click on shade smooth, but you can just right click and then click on shade shade smooth. And then if you look here on the edges, you can see it still looks a little bit blocky and a little bit low poly. So with the object selected, I can click on add modifier. Let's go down here and add the subdivision surface modifier to smooth it out even more. And I will turn the viewport and render levels both up to two. So now we have a nice smooth circular pie dish. Let's press control S to save the blender file. Or you can also click here on file and click on save. And I will just save this as applepie.blend and I will click on save blender file. And then as you're working on the project, you can press control S and that will save the file. So the next thing that I wanna create is the pie crust, which is around the edge of the pie dish. So I'm going to press shift S and I'm gonna move my mouse to cursor to world origin just to make sure this 3D cursor here is in the very center of the 3D scene. That way I can press shift A. I'm gonna go here to mesh and I'm gonna add another circle. And because the 3D cursor was in the center there, the circle is added in the center of the scene. And I'll hit the G key to move this. I can hit Z, bring it up on the Z axis, and then I will press the tab key to go to edit mode. And I'm just going to scale this down. And I can also bring it down on the Z axis and just stick it right there. And then I will hit the E key to extrude this again. I'll bring it up on the Z axis like that. And then I can scale the entire thing down, just scale it down like that. And then I will extrude it out again by hitting the E key, and then I will hit S, and we're going to scale that down, make it a bit smaller like that. Then I can hit the E key again to extrude it. Let's bring it down on the Z axis, and then I can scale it down. So we're basically just making kind of a lump there, which kind of comes up and then goes down, and it's going all the way around. So that's going to be the pie crust on the edge. I can also press the A key to select everything, and I could scale the whole thing up a bit and maybe bring it down a little bit. And also, I think I'm going to just hold down the Alt key and select that ring of vertices there, and I can scale it back a little bit because it might be a bit too thick. And then I can hold down the Alt key, select that loop of vertices there, and I can scale this up a little bit because it is a little bit thick. So that is good. Now I do need to recalculate the normals. I can see that the shading is kind of dark and it looks a little bit weird compared to the other object. So I can press the A key to select everything and I can press Shift N. That will recalculate the normals. So now they are flipped in the correct direction. So I will press the Tab key to go back to object mode. So let's add the subdivision surface modifier. So you can click on add modifier and add the subdivision surface. The shortcut key is Control 2. So the control and the two on the top of your keyboard that will add the subdivision surface modifier And then I want to turn the levels of viewport and render both up to three so that it is very subdivided And I also want it to be very subdivided because we are going to be using the displacements in the material To actually make the pie crust be kind of bumping up and down and give that pie crust shape and then using the object context menu, I can shade the object smooth. And then if I tab to go back into edit mode, I can select everything with the A key. And I think I will bring everything up a little bit on the Z axis and scale everything up a little bit, just like that. So that is pretty good. All right, so the next object that I wanna make is the pie filling. So to do that, again, press Shift S, go to cursor to world origin, just to make sure the 3D cursor is in the center there. And I can press Shift A. I'm gonna go here to mesh and I'm gonna add a UV sphere. And then I can press one on the numpad to go to front view. And let's go into edit mode with the tab key. And then I want to delete half of the mesh because I only want the top. So I can hold down the Z button and go into the wireframe view. And I'll press the A key to deselect everything. 
So I'm now going to click and drag to box select all of these vertices here. So just all the bottom vertices and I can hit the X key and we want to delete the vertices. So now there's just the upper half of the sphere. So I'll press the A key to select everything. We're going to scale the entire object, but then let's hit the Z key to scale it on the Z axis. And we're just going to flatten that down like that. And then I can hit the G key to grab the object. Let's bring it down on the Z axis, place it down there, and I can also scale it down a little bit. So I'm going to hold down the Z button, go back to solid view, and you can see what we've made. I think that is maybe pushed down a little bit too much. So I think I'll scale the whole thing up a little bit on the Z axis, and then I can scale the whole thing down a bit. And then I can press the tab key to go back to object mode and we need to shade it smooth. So using the object context menu, you can just click on shade smooth. And let's press Control S again to save the Blender file. Now, just like this object here, we're going to be using the displacements in the shader to make the little chunks of Apple look like they're bumping out. And so because of that, I do want to add more geometry that the displacements can actually use. So with the Apple filling object selected, I'm going to press Control 2. That will add the subdivision surface modifier. But then here on the levels and the viewport, I'm going to turn this up to like 5. And if for some reason it's a little bit laggy in your 3D scene, then you could turn the viewport down so you could turn the viewport down just to like one or two but then turn the render up to five so that it'll actually render with five i want to preview how it's actually going to look though in the viewport so i will turn my viewport and render levels both up to five so the next object that we're going to add is the pie crust on top and we're going to be modeling kind of like that weave shape where the pie crust goes in and out and goes up and down through itself so again, press Shift S, go to Cursor to World Origin, and I can press Shift A, and let's go here and add a plane. I can press the Tab key to go to edit mode. I can bring the plane up on the Z axis, and I can scale the whole thing down. And I'll bring it up on the Z axis again so I can see it. And we'll scale it down a bit more. So I'm now gonna click on Add Modifier, and I'm gonna go here to Generate, and I'm gonna add the Mirror Modifier. So by using the Mirror Modifier, we can have it mirror this side over here and this side over here. So we'll actually only need to model a quarter of the pie crust, and then it will be mirrored over to the other side. So it'll save us a lot of modeling time. So I will hit G to grab, and I'm gonna bring this back here, also bring it up a bit, and I'm gonna bring it over just to one side here. And if I hit seven on the numpad, to go to top view I'm just gonna bring it back here so it's gonna be the bottom right and you can see right here in the mirror the x-axis is turned on so it's gonna mirror it over to the x-axis and for some reason if it isn't mirroring over properly that might be because you moved the object over in object mode and when you move the object over in object mode it's gonna move the origin and the origin is the center of where it's gonna mirror from so if that happened you could use the mirror object by just clicking here on the eyedropper and then you can select one of these objects which are in the center and it will do the same thing. It'll mirror it from the center. I'm not going to do that though because I have the object origin in the very center of the scene. So I'm going to press the tab key again to go back to edit mode. And then I don't just want to mirror it back and forth on the X axis. I also want to mirror on the Y axis so I can turn on Y. So now you can see it's being mirrored over three times. So we can just model this one and it's going to mirror over to the other. So now we're going to create those strips of pie crust. So I'm going to hit G to grab. And I actually want to put these all together because the first strip of pie crust is going to be connecting. Now I want these vertices to connect with each other. So so right here on the mirror modifier, I'm going to turn on the clipping. Now I can press G to grab and I can move it back and you can see they're going to stay connected. So I can push them together and I'm going to bring them together like that. So now it's going to mirror over to the other side. So I can just model this side and it will be mirrored over. And I can press G to grab and I can bring this out and make it nice and long. I can also hit the 7 on the numpad for top view and bring that all the way over to the end of the pie. So that is the strip in the middle, but I also wanna have two more over here, and then of course it'll be mirrored over. So what I wanna do is actually turn off the clipping, then with the object selected in edit mode with the mesh selected, I can press Shift D to duplicate, and I'm gonna bring this over. And then I can turn the clipping back on now that we've duplicated it and moved it away from the mirror. So I'll turn the clipping back on, and I can press G to grab, and I wanna just stick it in there so it connects with the mirror and I can bring it back. 
And then I want to make it about the same thickness as this piece here. So I can scale this and I'm going to scale it on the X axis and make it a bit longer. And I don't want to make it too thick because if it's too thick, then it'll actually be hard to see the apple filling underneath the pie crust. So I don't want to make it too thin or too thick, but I think something like that is pretty good. All right, so that is good. So I now want to duplicate it one more time. So I will hit shift D to duplicate. I'm going to bring this over and again, make it kind of even. So there's an even spacing and I definitely want there to be some space there so I can see the apple filling when the pie is finished. So just something like that. Now you can see that right here on the edges, um, it's kind of going through, it's going too far. So I'm gonna select this vertex here and I can double tap the G key and double tapping the G key will activate the edge slide. And I can just bring that back so that it is fitting the round shape of the pie. So I can select this one here and also double tap the G key to activate the edge slide and stick that there. And then this one, that is fine where it is. So I now want to duplicate all of these strips of pie crust and I wanna make them going the opposite direction. So I will press the A key to select everything and then I wanna turn off the clipping so it's not connecting with the mirror. So I will now press Shift D to duplicate. I can hit R to rotate and then I wanna type in a specific value. So I'm gonna type in nine, zero and then enter so it's rotating over by 90 degrees. And so now that this has been moved over, I can click on the clipping to turn it back on and I can press G to grab. I'm gonna bring this forward so it connects to the mirror. Then I can press G to grab again and I can bring this back so that it fully connects to the mirror. And then right here, I want this piece here to be connected to the mirror. So I'll hit G to grab again and I can push that right in there and just try to make it about the same thickness. So something like that. And then also right here, this is going out too far. So let's select the vertex and double tap the G key, bring it back, select this vertex, double tap the G key, bring that there, select this vertex, double tap the G key, bring that about there, and then this one here, double tap the G key, and bring that back. So there we go, we now have the top part of the crust. Now I think I want some of these pieces to be a little bit thinner. So you can click here on the face select, and then you can just select this face, and you can scale this on the x-axis to make it a bit thinner. Select this face, scale it on the x-axis. Um, I don't wanna make it too thin, but just a little bit thinner, so I think I'll scale this one. This one I need to scale on the y-axis, just make it a bit thinner and also this here scale it on the y-axis so something like that um, you can of course adjust this later if you need to um, that is pretty good I think the center one here I think I might select that center piece and I will press G to grab bring it over on the x-axis and stick that there something like that so I now want to make this pie crust thicker because it doesn't actually have any thickness right now. So make sure you're in object mode and I can click on add modifier and let's add the solidify modifier. So it's here under generate solidify. So the solidify modifier is going to make that object thicker. You can see there on the edge, it is now thicker and you can play around with the thickness value to make it thicker. So I'm going to turn my thickness value here to 0.03. And then I wanna bevel the edges because it still looks very sharp and blocky. So let's click on add modifier. And here under generate, we can add the bevel modifier. And I can scroll down to see the bevel modifier. And I just wanna leave the segments at one. I don't really want very many segments. I just want one, but I do wanna turn this amount down. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key and drag the amount on the bevel and just make it much smaller. And I'm gonna turn my bevel amount just to a 0 0.001. So it will be pretty small. And then I wanna give it the subdivision surface modifier to make it a bit more smooth and a bit more round because it still has a very square sharp shape. So I'm gonna scroll back up here. Let's click on add modifier and under generate, I can add the subdivision surface modifier. And if I wanna make these smaller, I can click on the little arrow here and that's gonna like minimize the modifier. So I can make that smaller and this smaller as well. And here's the subdivision surface modifier. And I wanna turn the levels of viewport and render both up to two. And now you can see it looks a bit more smooth. And then using the object context menu, I can shade the object smooth. Now, right now the pie crust is still flat. So it's flat right here and it just goes straight over. But I want it to be kind of round with the pie. So to do this, I will press the tab key to go to edit mode. And I'm gonna press seven on the numpad to go to top view. And I wanna hit the one on the top of my keyboard to go to the vertex select. 
and I'm going to hold down the Z button and go to wireframe. And I'll press the A key to deselect everything. And then I can just click and drag to box select those vertices there in the center. And I can hold down the Z button and go back to solid view. So now we just have those vertices there in the center selected. So I want to bring everything up, but I want the other vertices around it to be pulled along with it. So to do that, I can press the O key, or you can click right here to turn on the proportional editing. And I can now press G to grab, and I'm going to hit Z to bring it up on the Z axis. And you can see that because we have the proportional editing on, there is this circle here. And if you use your scroll wheel, you can scroll in and out, and that's going to change the size of the proportional editing. And I just want to scroll that out a bit more like that and then I can kind of bring the whole thing up. So this way the vertices which are closer to the selection are going to be pulled along with it but then as they get farther away there's going to be less and less of an effect. So I'm just going to bring that up to about there and then I can press the tab key to go back to object mode and I can bring the entire object down on the z-axis and just like place it down there. Now I'm just going to bring it down even farther so that the edges there are kind of where they need to be. So kind of like right about there. And then I can press the tab key to go back to edit mode and I can press G to grab, bring it up on the Z axis and just fit that so that it is at the correct spot. And I need to scroll my mouse wheel out so it's a bit longer or so that it's a bit bigger and bring that up there. And then press the tab key to go back to object mode and I can bring the entire thing down again on the Z axis. So something like that. I think I need to do that one more time. So go back to edit mode, G to grab. I'll bring it up on the Z axis. And don't worry about that weird beveling problem that's happening, we'll fix that later. Um, I'm gonna bring that up there and just stick that there. And then again, I'll go back to object mode I can bring the entire thing down on the z-axis. So something like that is pretty good. I think I'll just bring the entire thing up though a little bit more, and there we go. And you can see that there's this weird error here where it's like coming up. Uh, we will fix that in a moment. So if I select the object now and press the tab key to go into edit mode, I want to be able to edit this mesh a bit better. So what I'm going to do right over here on the modifiers is I'm going to click on the on cage button, and I'm going to turn these on on the mirror and the solidify. And what this will do is it'll sh basically show us what the mesh would be like if we had applied the mirror and the solidify. So you can see now we can actually see the vertices for that solidify, even though it's a modifier and we haven't applied the modifier, but it's still going to show us that. And by turning on the on cage for the mirror, it's going to allow us to select the vertices which are on the other side of the mirror. And then also I want to turn off the proportional editing. So you can press the O key or click right there on that button to turn off the proportional editing. So by turning on these on cage options, it'll allow us to model more easily. Now you can see right here in the center that there's this weird problem where it's kind of bumping up, and that is because of the bevel. So if I open up the bevel modifier right here, you can see that the limit method is set to angle, and there's an angle of 30. And so this is telling the bevel modifier what angle it's going to add a bevel to, because if the angle is very small, it's not going to add a bevel. For instance, right here on this mesh, you can see it's not adding a bevel right now it's very smooth but if I bring it up now it's sharp enough of an angle that is going to add a bevel so I'll just press Control Z to undo that and so I want to just turn the angle up so that it won't add a bevel in that area I want to add a bevel to the edges here but I don't want it to add a bevel right here so let's turn the angle up to 50 and 50 will work great. So now you can see there isn't a bevel there, right there, but then right over here on the sides, on this side, there is a bevel and that is exactly what I want. So now we can start modeling the weave effect. And again, because we have the mirror modifier, we can just model this corner here, and then it's going to mirror it over to all the other sides. So that will save us a lot of time. So to model the weaves, I need to add loop cuts to give it more geometry. So I'm just going to start right here, kind of in the center, and I'm going to press Control R to add a loop cut. And when you press Control R, you can see that little yellow line there. And I'm going to move my yellow line right there, and then I can left click to place that. Then I can drag this over. And then I'm going to left click again to place it there. And I'm sticking it here because this is just on the other side of where the other weave is going. Then I'll press Control R again and I will left click, drag this over and left click to place it right there. 
So this weave here is gonna be going on top of the other one. So what I can actually do is click right here to go to the edge select. And so if I have the edge select, I can just select that single edge and it will select the mirror because it's connecting. And also it'll select that bottom one there because this is an actual geometry, it's using the solidify modifier. And so I can just bring that around and I can bring it up and down. So I'm gonna double tap the G key, bring it over and I can hit G to grab and bring it down on the Z axis just a little. And then this one right here, I want that to actually be going under so I can select that edge right there and I'll hit G to grab and I can bring it down on the Z axis and I'm gonna stick it down there so that it is touching the pie filling just like that. And then I also wanna add a loop cut in there to kind of sharpen this up. So I'll press Control R to add a loop cut. I can left click, drag over, left click again and then I can hit G to grab and let's bring it down on the Z axis. And I'm just gonna maybe stick it down there and then now that I brought that down I can Go, hold down the Z button and go back to wireframe. And I just wanna select that loop right there. So just that edge. And I can hold down the Z button and go back to solid. And then I can bring the entire thing up on the Z axis, just like that. All right, so now it's starting to go down and then it comes up and then it will go down again. So let's just finish off this weave. So I'm gonna go right over here. And so it started down, then it went up. So then this one here, it's gonna go down again. So I can press Control R to add a loop cut. I can left click right here, drag up and place it there. And then I can press G to grab, move it down a little bit. I can also press Control R to add a loop cut, left click and place it there. And then I can bring this one down like that. And then right here, Control R to add another loop cut. Let's bring this over here and I can bring this one up a little bit. And then also right here, I can just select that loop right there. And you might need to hold down the Z button, go into wireframe so that you can actually see it and just select that edge right there. Go back to solid view and I can bring this down on the Z axis. All right, so there's the first one. So it starts down, then it goes up and then it goes down again. So I'm now gonna do the other one right over here. So I'm gonna navigate over to this side and we're gonna do pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to press Control R to add a loop cut, and you can see it's adding a loop cut right over there because that is the center in between those two loops. So I'm going to click, and then I can drag over, and then click to place it there. And then I'm going to hold down the Shift key and also select that edge there, and I can bring the entire thing down on the Z axis and just stick it there on top of that other weave. And then I can select that one right there, select that edge, press G to grab, bring it up on the Z axis and stick it there. So now this one is going over the other one. So because this one went over here, it's gonna go under this one here. So I'll press Control R to add a loop cut. I can drag this over and then I can bring it down on the Z axis. Then I can press Control R to add another loop cut bring this one over and you can see it's going a bit too far down so I can bring it up on the Z axis and place it about there. So because it went under, it's now gonna go over this weave. So I'll press Control R to add another loop cut, bring this here and I can bring it up on the Z axis, place that there, Control R to add another loop cut, bring that there and then bring it up on the Z axis. And then right here, I might need to go into wireframe. So I'll hold down the Z button, go to wireframe and I can select that edge right there and I can hold down the Z button and go back to solid view and I can press G to grab and bring it down on the Z axis and stick it about there. So now this one starts up, then it goes down and then it goes up again. All right, so now let's do the next one. So this one here. So this one started up and then it went down. So this next one here is gonna be on top of it. So I'll press Control R to add a loop cut. I can click and then I can drag up and then I can bring this down on the Z axis and stick it there. And then I can select this one here and let's bring it down on the Z axis. And now that I brought that down, I wanna select this edge again and bring it up a little bit. So because it started as going up, I want the next one to be going under. So I can press Control R to add another loop cut. Let's bring this over and I can bring this up just a little because it is kind of going through the pie filling. I can also press Control R to add a loop cut there and then bring that one down on the Z axis. All right, and then right here, Control R to add a loop cut, click and bring that over. And then I can bring this one up on the Z axis a bit because it is going a bit through the pie filling. All right, and then because it went under here, it's gonna go over here. So I'll press Control R again to add another loop cut. Let's bring this over. And then I can bring this up on the Z axis like that. And then Control R to add another loop cut 
bring that there, and I can bring this one up on the z-axis again. Maybe double tap the G key again to activate the edge slide and move it back a bit. Let's press Control S to save, and then let's navigate over here to this side, and we're gonna do the next one, so this one here. So I'll press Control R to add a loop cut, place that there. We're gonna drag this up, but this one we wanna be under, so I'll select that edge, G to grab, bring it down on the z-axis, we're gonna stick that down there, then select this edge here, not that one, but that one there, bring it down on the Z axis, just place that there. And actually it might be easier if we took the solidify on cage and turned that off. Um, you may wanna turn it on or you may wanna turn it off. You can just do whatever works best for you. But if I turn that off, now I actually can't see the one that's on the bottom side because of the solidify. So I'll just try that with that off, that might work a bit better. So I'll press Control R to add another loop cut, click and drag that over, and this one is going to be up, so I will press G to grab, move that up a bit, and then I can select this one here and I'll bring that one a bit more down. And Control R to add another loop cut, let's bring this one up here, and then I can bring that down a little bit and bring that down a little bit. So it starts down, it goes up, and then right here at the end it'll go down, so Control R to add another loop cut. Let's bring this down on the z-axis a little bit and place that there. And then you can also go into wireframe if you need to, select that edge right there, and I can bring it down on the z-axis a little bit. So just like that. Let's press Control S to save. I can press the tab key to go back to object mode and you can see we're actually almost finished because it's mirroring it over to the other side and that is looking really cool. So we basically just have these two here. So I will tab to go back into edit mode. I'm gonna zoom in here right to this one. And this one is gonna start up because the previous one went under. So this weave is gonna go up, then it will go under here and then it will be up at the end. So I'll press Control R to add a loop cut click there, drag that over, and I can bring it up on the z-axis. I can also select this here, bring it up on the z-axis and place that there. And then I'll press Control R to add another loop cut, bring that there and bring it down on the z-axis. Just stick it under that one. Control R to add another loop cut. And if you're wondering why these edges are slanted, it's because if I go to wireframe, you can see this edge here is slanted. And so when we add a loop cut, it's going to be slanted. So if you wanted to fix that, what you could do is press the one on the top of your keyboard or click right here to go to the vertex select. And you could just select a vertex and then you can double tap the G key that will activate the edge slide. And you could just bring that back and then double tap the G key and bring that over. And that will just fix it. So if you wanted to, you could just select some of these and double tap the G key and move them over, um, but it won't affect the modeling that much. You can see it's not actually really changing that much of how the weave looks. So if you wanted to, you could kind of play around with that, um, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. All right, so let's now go right back here to the edge select, and I'm going to hold down the Z button and go to wireframe, and I can just select that edge there, go back to a solid view, and I can bring it up on the Z axis a bit, just like that. All right, so we are almost done. I'm going to go over to this one here. This is the last one. So because this one here started up, this one here is gonna be down. So I'll press Control R to add a loop cut, bring this over, and just make sure it's underneath that one. And then it will go up here. So Control R to add another loop cut, bring that over, and I can bring it up on the Z axis, place that there. Control R to add another loop cut, bring that over, and bring it up on the z-axis and then right here Control r we'll add another one there and we'll bring this one down a bit and i can again go into wireframe and i'm going to select that one there go back to solid view and i can bring it down on the z-axis and then right here you can see that is slanted so i will click right here to go to the vertex select i can select that vertex and double tap the g key and i'm just going to do that so just select the vertices and double tap the G key just to kind of fix that shape. So that is a bit better. All right, so now I'm just gonna kind of look around here and make sure everything is looking good. So I think I wanna go into wireframe, select that one there, maybe bring it down a little bit. Just kind of look around. You can rotate anything or move it around if you need to, and just kind of tweak everything and make sure it looks good. Um, and also like right here, you can see this piece is starting to go in. So to fix that, I can press Control R to add a loop cut. I can drag that out and place that there. 
So just kind of go around, just kind of make sure that all looks good. And you just need to look at this corner. So just look at a corner of the pie because it'll be mirrored over to the other side. Tab to go back to object mode and I can press control S to save. And there we go. This is really starting to look like a pie now because we have that weave there on the top of the apple pie. So we are now ready to add the lighting. So I'm going to click right here to go to the world properties. And on default, the default world is just this gray color. And so I want to add in the HDRI that I talked about at the beginning of the tutorial. So right here on color, I can click on the yellow dot and I'm going to go here to texture and I'm going to choose environment texture. And then I can click on open to open up the HDRI. And here's the HDRI that I'll be using. So again, this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com. Links in the description if you'd like to download it. I downloaded the 1K HDR version and I can just click on open image. So this is going to give us some really nice realistic lighting. And also if you go right here to the render properties, make sure you're in cycles render if you want to get much more realism. And this tutorial really does work best in cycles. So I'm going I'm going to hold down the Z button and move my mouse up into the rendered view so I can actually just preview how that's looking. So all the colors and all the lighting here is really going to make it look more realistic. And then if I click right here back to the world properties, I actually want to turn the strength down a little bit because I want the entire world to be a little bit darker. And then we're going to add some lights to actually light up the pie. So I'm going to turn the strength to like a 0.7, just so that it's a bit darker. And then also to make the colors and lighting a bit more contrasty, I'm going to go right up here to the render properties and I'm going to go all the way down here and open up the color management. And here on the color management, I'm going to leave the view transform to filmic and on the look here I want to choose high contrast so this is going to pop out the colors and make everything a bit more saturated and contrasty so I now want to add two lights so I'm going to hold down the Z button go back to solid view and I can press shift a and I'm going to go down here to light and I'm going to add the area light and I can go over here to the side. I'm actually going to press one on the numpad to go to front view and I can bring this light up here and I can rotate the light over so it is pointed at the pie. And I'll bring this a bit farther back and I can scale the entire thing up a bit, scale it up like that. And then if I go right over here to the object data properties, I want to make this be like a long light. So if I click on the shape here, I can change it to rectangle and then I'm actually going to drag the Y size and I'm going to make this much longer. So it is a very wide light. I want to make that a bit longer. So something like that. And then right here on the power, I do want to make that much stronger. Let's hold down the Z button and go into rendered view again so I can see how that's looking and I can start to turn the power up. And I think a power of like 200 is pretty good. So it'll add a little bit of lighting there. And then right here on the color, I'm going to make this a slightly blue color. So the light will be very slightly blue. And now you can see that taking effect. And then I can press seven on the numpad for top view. And I want to add one more light over here and it's going to be a bit brighter. So I will press shift D to duplicate. I can rotate the light around and I'm going to stick it here and kind of bring it over. And then if I click here on the shape, I don't want it to be rectangle. So I'm just going to change it back to square and I can kind of bring this light a bit closer. And then this light here, I want the power to be stronger. So I'm going to turn this to like 400. So it's a bit brighter. And now if I zoom in there, you can see we have some nice blue lighting shining on the pie. So let's now add a camera so I can hold down the Z button, go back to solid view, and I'm going to press shift A and let's go here and click on camera. And then I'm going to navigate to where I want the camera to be. So I'm going to go here to the side. If I press seven on the numpad to go to top view, I want the camera to be kind of right over here on the front right. So I'm going to move my view over here and kind of zoom in and I'm going to look down at the pie. So once you've moved your view to where you want the camera to be, you can press control alt numpad zero and that is going to bring the camera to your view. And then I can hold down the Z button and go up into the rendered view to see that. Now, I don't really want Blender to render the preview all over here. I just want it to render the preview of what the camera can see. So in the camera view, I can press control B and I can drag a box around the camera and then let go. And this way it'll just render a preview of what the camera can see. And then if you click right here on the corner, that'll select the camera. And if you want to move the camera around, you can press the G key. That'll move the camera around. You can also press the G key and then double tap the Z key and that'll bring the camera in and out. 
And then also I want to change the focal length of the camera. So with the camera selected, you can click on the object data properties and right here on the focal length, I want to turn this up to 60 and this will make everything look a bit more flat. And I do think it looks a bit nicer. And then I also want to rotate it down a little bit. So I'm going to double tap the R key and then I can hold down the shift key and that'll make my movement sensitive. And I'm going to just place it there. Then I can hit G to grab and I will just bring that up a bit. And I can also press G to grab and then double tap the Z key and bring the camera out a bit, so something like that. And I do want a little bit of space here on kind of the top of the pie because we are gonna be adding a little bit of steam, like some wisps of steam. So I do want a little bit of space there on top of the pie. So something like that is pretty good. All right, so we can now get started with the materials. Now, when I'm doing the procedural nodes, I am gonna be using the Node Wrangler add-on. So if you don't have that add-on enabled, you can click here on edit and you can go to the preferences. And then you can click right over here on the add-ons tab and you can go to the search and you can search for a node wrangler and just check mark the node wrangler add-on so it's built into blender and i'll show you how to use it in the video so we can just close the user preferences so i'm going to start by creating the pie dish so let's click here on the pie dish and then i'm going to click right over here on the shading workspace so in the shading workspace i have the 3d viewport over here i'll press zero on the numpad to go into the camera view i can hold down the z button and go up into the rendered view just to preview that and then right over here I have the shader editor. So I'm just going to make this smaller so that I have more space for the procedural material. Let me make this a bit smaller as well. And then I can click on new here to create a new material. And I'm just going to rename this material to pie dish or pie tin, whatever you want to call it. So this material is going to be very simple. I want it to be a metallic material. So let's turn the metallic value all the way up to one. So now it is metal. And then I also want to make it a bit more shiny. So let's turn the roughness down and I'm going to turn the roughness to a 0.25. So it is a bit more shiny. And then you could leave it as a silver color if you want. Um, I'm going to make it a bit darker and then I'm going to make it kind of an orangey color, kind of like a festive or fall color, something like that. And if you want to use the same exact color that I'm using over here on the hex value, you can punch in CC6937. That is the exact color that I'm using. But of course, you could make this like a blue dish or really any color that you want. I think the orange looks pretty nice. And then one small thing that I did notice on my scene, I think the pie dish is a bit too thick. So real quick, I'm going to jump back over here to the layout and I can hold down the Z button and go to solid view. And I can just select the pie dish and I can press tab to go to edit mode. Then what I'm going to do is click right here to go to the face select and then I can hold down the alt key and select that ring of faces there and I want to scale it in. So I will hit S to scale then I can hit shift Z and that will exclude the Z axis so we're just going to scale it on the X and Y and I can bring that in there. I just want to have a thinner pie dish I can tab to go back to object mode. Let's click back here on the shading workspace and that looks a lot better. I just didn't want to be quite that thick. So that is really it for the pie dish material. It is really quite simple. So we're now going to be doing the pie filling. So to make the pie filling, I actually want to click right here to select the crust and I want to press the H key to hide it just to get the crust out of the way. And now let's click on the pie filling material. I can click on new here and I can call this like pie filling or apple pie filling. And then we are going to be using the displacements to make the chunks of apple actually kind of bumping out of the mesh. So to make sure the displacements are going to work, let's drag this out here um, and you need to make sure you're using the cycles rendering engine. So over here on the render properties, make sure you're using cycles if you want to use the displacements. And then if you click right here on the modifier properties, we have the subdivision surface modifier and that's going to subdivide the mesh so that the displacements will have more geometry to work with. And then if you click right here on the material properties, there is one really important thing. So I'm going to minimize this tab and we want to open up the settings tab. And right here on surface, you can see there is displacement and right now it is set to a bump only. And so I want to click on this and I want to change this to displacement and bump. So this way we're telling the material that it can use the displacements. So let's drag the smaller. So now the displacements will work when we add them into the displacement here. So the first thing that I want to do is create the texture for the chunks of apple. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for the Voronoi texture and let's drop the Voronoi back here. 
And then because we turned on the Node Wrangler add-on, you can hold down the Control and Shift key and then select different nodes, and that's going to preview the node on the object. And then I want to use the object coordinates because you can see it looks kind of stretched and warped. So with the Voronoi texture selected, you can press Control T. That's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And then I don't actually need the mapping because the mapping is just used to transform the texture. So I can click on the mapping and press X to delete it. And then we want to use the object. So let's put the object into the vector. And you can see it's going to place the Voronoi texture on the object more evenly. And then if you click here on the F1, I want to change this to distance to edge. And this is going to be the texture that we're going to use to make the chunks of apple in the apple pie. And then right here on the scale, I'm also going to turn this to a 6. Now this doesn't actually look very organic because those edges there are very sharp. So I want to add another texture here to distort the placement of the Voronoi. So I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go here to the search. And I'm going to search for the noise texture. And we're going to stick the noise texture in here between the object and the vector. And so the noise texture is going to distort it, but that's distorting it way too much. And so I want the noise texture to have less of effect on the Voronoi. First, let's change some of the noise texture settings. So I'm going to turn the scale to 8. And then I want it to be very detailed. So let's turn the detail to the max of 50. And then also right here, I do want to add a bit more roughness. So let's turn the roughness to like a 0.55. So now that has a bunch more detail, but it's distorting it way too much. So we can't really see those chunks of apple. So I'm going to drag the noise texture up here, and then I'm going to press shift A. Let's go here to the search, and I'm going to search for the mix RGB node. And I want to stick the mix RGB node here in between the noise texture and the Voronoi. And then I don't actually want to use the color, I want to use the factor. So let's unplug the color, and I want to put the factor here into color 2 of this mix. And then we're going to take the original object coordinates, and we're going to put that into color 1. So basically, we are mixing between color 1 and color 2, and that is the the noise texture, which is distorting it, and then the object coordinates, which is not distorting it. And if I drag the factor, I can drag between it being very distorted at 1 or not distorted at all at 0. And you can see when I drag this, it's moving the texture around. And to make the texture not be moving around, I'm going to click on the mix here. And I'm going to go down here and choose the linear light. So this way I can drag it around and it's not going to move the texture. So I can just drag this up a little bit and now you can see it is distorting it, but we still can see the Voronoi texture. So I'm going to turn the factor way down, and I'm actually going to turn the factor to a 0 0.076. That's the exact value that I'll be using. So now you can see it still looks like there's those apple chunks, but it is a bit distorted there on the edges. Now I also want to add another Voronoi texture, and we're going to make this other Voronoi texture very small, and we're going to make it look like little bits of cinnamon in the apple pie filling. So I'm going to select this Voronoi texture, and I'm going to press Control shift d So Control shift d will duplicate the Voronoi, but it'll keep the linear light plugged up to it. And then I can Control shift and select the Voronoi texture. And then I don't want it to be set to distance to edge, so I'm going to click on this drop down arrow, and I'm going to choose F1 instead. So F1 is basically just going to make it look like a bunch of little circles. And if you zoom in there, you can see there's those little circles, but because the linear light is going into the vector, it's distorting it a little bit, so they look a bit more natural and random, and they have a bit of noise. And then right here on the scale, I'm going to turn the scale to like 150, so that it is very small. And so these little bits here are going to be the little bits of cinnamon in the pie filling. Now I want to make this cinnamon texture much more contrasty. So to do that, I can drag the principal shader back here, and I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for the color ramp, and let's stick the color ramp here after this top Voronoi. So I can now drag these values together, and that's going to make it more contrasty. And I actually want to flip these values, so I'm going to drag the white over here, and then I'll drag the black to about there. So now we just have those little white bits of cinnamon. So I now want to join the apple texture and the cinnamon texture together. So to do that, I can press Shift A, let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for the mix RGB, and let's stick the mix RGB right here after the color ramp. And then I want to take the color here from the color ramp, and I'm going to stick that into the factor, and then this Voronoi texture distance is going to go into color 1. So I can then Control Shift and select the mix to preview it. 
and I just want to add the dark values. So if I click on the mix here, I can change this to darken. And then right here on color two, I'm just gonna click on this and I'm gonna make it fully black. So this way it's now just going to add those little dark bits of cinnamon all over the apple texture. So I'm now going to click and drag to box select these two nodes here and I'm gonna bring them back and I'm going to control shift and select the principled shader so that I can preview that again. So I now want this darken to be going into the shader. So I'm first going to put it into the normal to give the shader some bump. So let's take the color and I can put that into the normal. Now when we do that, you can see it's not really working. There's some weird shading issues and that is because we need to convert the color data into a normal data. So I can press shift A, let's go here to the search, and I can search for the bump node, and let's put the bump node in between the darken and the principled shader. And then to actually convert it to normal data, we want the color to be going into the height. And now you can see that it actually looks bumpy. And then right here on the strength, I do want to make this a bit less strong. It doesn't look that strong right now, but once we add the displacements and everything, it will look a bit strong. So I'm going to turn the strength down to just like a 0.4, so that is a bit less strong. And then I also want to put it into the base color. So let's take the color here, and I can put that into the base color. But that doesn't look like an apple pie filling because it's white and black. And so I want to add a node in here to change the colors. So we can actually just click on this color ramp, and I can press Shift D to duplicate it. And let's stick it here in between the darken and the principled. And then I can hit the backspace, and that will reset the color ramp. So now let's make the colors for the apple pie filling. So I'm gonna click on this black tab right here, and I'm gonna make this kind of a dark reddish brown. So I'm gonna bring it over to the red and make it kind of dark. And if you wanna use the exact same color that I'm using over here on the hex, you can punch in 37, 0C00. That's the exact color that I'll be using. And I'm also going to drag this out a bit just to make it a bit more contrasty. And then right here, I'm going to click on this white tab and I'm going to drag the white tab out so you can see it a bit better. And then this is going to be kind of like the apple color. So I'm going to make this kind of like a light kind of pinkish, kind of peachy color, something like that. And the hex value that I'll be using for this color is going to be FF bf80 so that is going to look a lot more like the pie filling and then i also want this dark in here to be going into the roughness so let's bring the bump down and then i can take the color here and let's put that into the roughness but then i want to have more control over this because it's a bit too shiny right now so let's click on this color ramp and i can press shift d to duplicate it and let's stick it here in between the darken and the roughness and then i can hit the backspace with the color ramp selected to reset it so I can now click on the white tab, and if I make the white tab much darker, it's going to be more shiny. So you can see that is like super duper shiny, especially if you look here on the side. But if I make this much lighter, if I make it fully white, it's going to be more rough. And also the black tab here, if I make this white, you can see it's going to be very rough. So I want this tab over here to be fully black, but then on this white tab over here, I'm going to make this a dark color so it's a bit more shiny, because this is going to be a nice moist apple pie filling, so I do want it to be somewhat shiny. And the hex value that I'll be using for this dark color is going to be 3F, 3F, 3F. So now you can see it is pretty reflective. Now I also want to allow a bit of light to be going through the apples. So I want to turn on the subsurface scattering. And the subsurface scattering is going to make it look much more soft and more organic and make it look more like food. So I'm going to turn the subsurface to a point 0.1. And this way it's going to allow light to go through. Now it's kind of looking white right now. So I'm going to take the subsurface color and I'm going to make this kind of like a reddish orangey color. And this will make it look much more like apple pie. And the hex value that I'll be using for the subsurface color is going to be E73D00. So you can see it's making it look much more soft and organic and it's going to make it look much more like food. And the effect will be much more noticeable when we put it into the displacement as well. Because right now this is still pretty flat, but once the pieces of apple actually pop out of the mesh, it'll look much more like apple chunks. Now I also want to add a bit more noise to the final base color, because if I control shift and select the color ramp, there isn't too much noise. Noise. So what I'm going to do is take this noise texture here and we're going to put that into the base color. So I'm going to click and drag just to box select the material output and the principled and I'm going to drag this back and I can control shift and select the principled. So I'm now going to just select this darken here, this mix RGB set to darken and I can press shift D to duplicate it and let's drop it here 
after this color ramp going into the base color. And then I can take this noise texture and I'm going to take the factor. Let's pull out a wire and I can drag this all the way over. You can kind of push on the edge to kind of drag it up. And I want to stick it into the factor of this darken here. And then let's control shift and select the darken to preview it. And you can also see that this wire is kind of overlapping the other nodes. So what you can do is hold down the shift key and right click and drag and that's going to add a reroute. And then I can click and drag and I can bring the reroute up here. And then I can also hold down the shift key, right click and drag and let go. That'll add another reroute and I can just bring this up here. It's totally optional, but this is just a nice way to organize the node wires. Now, right here on color two on this darken, if I make this lighter, you can kind of see how that is changing. And so I wanna make this the same dark red color that we have right here. So on this color ramp, I can click on this red color, this dark red, and I can click and drag, and I can actually drop the color. I can drag and drop the color into color two. Now, there is one more thing that I wanna do. I wanna make this noise texture more contrasty. So I'm actually gonna select this color ramp right here and I can press shift D to duplicate it and let's bring it up right here and we're going to stick it in between the noise texture and the darken and then I can drag these tabs around and I'm going to bring the white tab kind of back over here and I can bring the black tab to about there. And when I do that, you can see that it's going to make the noise more contrasty. So if I drag these really close to each other, you can see the noise is very strong. But if I drag them back, that added noise is going to be a bit more subtle. All right, so I can control shift and select the principal shader. And now that has just a bit more noise and it looks a bit more random. And then one other really important thing that I want to do to make this look really nice, I want to put some data into the displacement to actually make it look like it's popping out. So I can take the Voronoi texture right here. This is the one that we're using to create the Apple texture. Let's take the distance and I can put this into the displacements. Now there's some weird issues with this and that's because we need to actually convert the black and white data into displacement data. So to do that, I can press shift A, let's go to the search and I can search for the displacement node and let's stick this right here in the wire and I can just drag this down and just stick it right there. And then I actually want the Voronoi texture distance to be going into the height value and that way it'll convert it to proper displacement data. Now that is way too strong. So let's take the scale and I'm just going to turn this down for now to just like a 0.1. So it is much less strong. But now you can see those little chunks of Apple are popping out and that looks really really nice. And you can see the subsurface scattering also adds a really cool effect. So that is really starting to look like apple pie filling. Now I do just want to adjust it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just take one of these color ramps and I can press shift D to duplicate it. And let's put it here before the displacement. And then I can just hit the backspace to reset that. So I can now drag the black tab over and you can see if I drag the black tab over, it's going to bring the parts down a bit. If I press control B, and then drag a box around here. That way it'll just render the preview a bit faster. And so now you can see if I drag the black tab over, it's gonna make those chunks of apple coming out a bit less. So I wanna drag this back. I don't want it to be all the way over here. I wanna drag it back to about there. And then also I can click on the white tab here and I can drag the white tab over and you can see that's gonna pop the apples out a bit. So I'm actually gonna drag the white tab like way over here, but now the apples are actually popping out too much. So if I click on the color here on the white tab, I can just drag this down a little bit and then they'll be a bit less strong. And if you wanna use the exact same value that I'm using here for this white color, I'm gonna be using a hex value of E5, E5, E5. And then you can see that the apples are still a bit too strong, so I can now just fix that with the scale. So I found that a scale of 0.04 looks pretty good. So now the apples are just popping out a little bit, but that looks really cool. And you can also see there's all those little dots there, and those little dots look like little bits of cinnamon in the apple pie filling. So I can press control B and I can drag a box around there. And there we go. We now have the finished procedural apple pie filling. So let's press control S to save the blender file again. And then you can move your mouse into the 3D viewport and you can press alt H and that'll unhide the objects. And then I can hold down the Z button and go up into the rendered view just to see how that's looking. And then if you need to, you can select the pie filling and move it up and down on the Z axis. Or you could also select the weave object and then you can move it up and down on the Z axis um, just to kind of fit that into place because I don't really want the pie filling to be going through the 
crust, um, but I'm going to leave that how it is for now, and once I have the material for the crust, then I'll move it up and down. So we're now going to be creating the crust material. So I'm going to select the pie crust, and then what I'm actually going to do is click here on the drop down, and we're going to add the apple pie filling, because this material is going to be very similar to the crust material, and so it'll save us time if we just delete some of the nodes and change it a bit and create the crust. So now that I've added that material, I want to duplicate this material so that it is separate. So to do that, I can click on this button right here. It looks like two little pieces of paper or like a little file icon, and that'll duplicate the material. So I can now just rename this material to apple pie crust. So now this is a separate material. So if we change things, it won't affect the other material. So I'm going to zoom in here and I want to delete four nodes. I want to delete the Voronoi, this color ramp, the other Voronoi, and the linear light. So you can just click and drag to box select these nodes. So the Voronoi, the linear light, and the color ramp, and I can press X to delete them. But we're still going to use the other nodes. So we're now going to add in some new textures to make the pie crust. So I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go to the search. And I'm going to first add a new Voronoi texture. Let's stick this down here. And I can Control Shift and select the Voronoi texture to preview it. Now right here on the F1, I want to change this to Smooth F1. And this is pretty much the same thing as F1, but the edges are going to be smooth. And then I'm also going to turn the scale here to 8. So I now want to distort this Voronoi to give it kind of a crusty texture. So I'm going to take the factor here from this noise texture and let's stick that into the vector. Now this is distorting it way too much, so I want to make it less strong. So I can press Shift A, let's go to the search, and I can search for the mix RGB and let's put the mix RGB in between the noise and the Voronoi. And then I can take the object coordinates and let's put that into color 1, and then we want the factor of the noise texture to be going into color 2. And then just like with the other texture, let's click on the mix here and let's change this to linear light. This way I can drag this around and it's not going to move the texture around, but it will distort it. So you can see if I just drag this up a bit, now it kind of looks like a crusty bread material. I'm going to turn the factor to 0.2 because I think 0.2 looks pretty good. Now I also want to give this crust material just some noise all over it. So I'm going to press Shift A, let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for a new noise texture, and let's put the noise texture underneath the linear light. And then the object can go into the vector, so I'm just going to stick that there. And then I can Control Shift and select the noise texture, and let's change some of the settings. So I'm going to turn the detail all the way to the max of 15 because I do want it to be pretty detailed. Detailed. And then let's also turn the scale up. I'm going to turn the scale up to 9. So now we have some nice noise all over. So I'm now going to use this darken here to mix the Voronoi and the noise together. So I'm going to take the distance from the Voronoi, and I'm going to put that into the factor of this darken, and then I can take this noise texture factor, and I'm going to put that into color 2 of the darken. And then I don't want it to be set to darken, so I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to just change this to a mix. And then I can control shift and select the mix to preview it. And I'm going to take the color one and I'm going to make that fully white. So now we're taking this Voronoi and this noise texture and we're going to mix them together. And it is pretty white. But you can definitely see that there. There's the Voronoi and then there's just some little subtle noise all over the texture. So I can now control shift and select the principal shader. And this mix is already going into this color ramp and into this bump. And I could also maybe drag these over. Although I do want to edit some of the properties of these nodes. So first let's do the bump. So on the bump here, I just want to make this a little bit more strong. So let's turn the bump to like a 0.5 so it's a bit more strong. And now you can see if you zoom in there, there is some nice bump there on the crust. And then this crust is very shiny, and that's because we duplicated it from the other material, but I want the crust to look like it's cooked, so it's going to be a bit more dry. So I'm going to click on this color ramp here, which is going into the roughness, and if I make the colors lighter, they're going to be more rough. So I can click here on this tab, click on the gray tab, and I'm going to make this a bit brighter. And the hex value that I'll be using for this lighter color is going to be BA, BA, BA. So now the crust looks a bit more dry. And then let's go up here to the colors. So on the color ramp and the darken, I do want to change some of these colors a little bit. So on the color ramp here on this red color, I want to make this a bit more orange. And then I want to make it a little bit brighter. And I think that looks better for the crust. And to use the exact same color that I'm using, you can go to the hex and you can punch in 5, 1. 
1C00. And then I also want to drag this out a bit so you can see a bit more of it. And I can also control shift and select the color ramp to kind of preview that. So I want to drag it out a bit so you can see it a bit better. And then this kind of tannish kind of peachy color, I want to drag this back a bit and I'm going to drag it all the way over. And then I want to click on the peach color and I want to make it a little bit more yellow and a bit less saturated. And the color that I'll be using for this peachy color is going to be a hex value of F2 C284. So now that looks much more like a bread crust. And then I can also control shift and select the darken and you can see what that noise texture is doing. Now I do still want to use this darken with the color ramp and the noise texture because I want to add a bit more noise all over, but I do want to change color too. So I'm going to click on color two and I'm going to make this a bit brighter and a bit more orange and that'll make it a look a bit more like cooked pie crust. And let's actually make this a bit more orange and a bit brighter. And the hex value for color two is going to be BF. For a 17 so now you can see that it's a bit brighter and it kind of looks a bit reddish and orangey so I can now control shift and select the principal shader to preview that and then I do want to leave the subsurface because that really helps to make it look more like food but on the subsurface color I want to make this a little bit darker and the hex value that I'll be using for the subsurface color is going to be a 7 to F00. So you can punch that in if you want to use the exact color I'm using. All right, so now I want to put some values into the displacement to give it a little bit of bump. So I can actually click on the color ramp and I can just press X to delete it because we don't need the color ramp. And then I want to take the mix here, I want to take the color, and I want to put that into the height the value of the displacement. And now if I look here on the edges, you can see it is kind of making it bumpy. But that is a little bit too strong, I do want to make it a little bit more subtle, so I'm going to turn the scale to a 0.03 on the displacement. And then just one more thing I want to do to make the material look a bit more like pie crust. If you go to this bottom noise texture, I want to turn the roughness up a bit to like 0.6. And now it's just going to be a bit more detailed and I think that looks a bit better. So there we have it. There is the pie crust material. So I can zoom out here and then what I can do is I can kind of adjust the size of this. So I can click on the pie filling. I can press G to grab, bring it up on the Z axis. And I want to do this in the rendered view because the displacement is going to affect it. So I can kind of drag the pie filling and I want to make the pie filling like as high as it can be without it popping through the crust a bit too much. So something like that. I just want to make it as high as it can. I could also bring the pie crust down if I wanted, bring it down a little bit, um, but something like that is pretty good. All right, so I now want to add this pie crust material to the outer edge. So I can actually just click right here and drag and drop this material on this object. Or you can select the object and click right here and just select the pie crust. Now I actually want to duplicate this material and change it a little bit because I want to make the edges kind of going up and down and give that cool effect of apple pie that they usually add when they're making apple pie. They kind of make the crust going up and down kind of in a wavy pattern. So to do that I want to duplicate this material and then I can add some values into the displacement to make it bumpy. So again let's click right here to duplicate this material. Let's also press Control S to save the Blender file and then I can rename this to apple pie crust edge so apple pie crust edge so now this is a different material so it won't affect the other material so i'm going to create the node setup down here so i'm going to press shift a let's go to the search and i can search for the gradient texture let's drop the gradient texture down here and then i can control shift and select the gradient texture to preview it and then i want to take the object from the texture coordinate and let's put that into the vector of the gradient so you can see the gradient is going to have it black over here and white over here. But I instead want there to be lots of little gradients which are going all the way around. So I can click on the linear and I'm going to change it instead to the radial. So now you can see that it starts white right over here and as it goes around it gets darker. Now I want to basically mirror it so that it starts to get dark and then it starts to get light. So what I can do is press shift A. I can go to the search and I can search for the math node and let's stick the math node here and just bring it over and I want to click on the add and I want to change it to the ping pong. So it's right here, you can see rounding, go down here and select the ping pong. So now instead of it being really sharp, it's black over here, 
then it gets lighter, and then it gets dark again. Now right now we just have one gradient, and so I want to make a lot of gradients, so it's going white and black and white and black. So I can take this ping pong, I can press Shift D to duplicate it, and I can drop it right here before the first one. And then I can click on the ping pong, and I'm going to instead change this to multiply. So we're going to actually multiply the ping pong. And then I can turn the value up, and you can see now it's going to multiply it, and so now we have a bunch of little stripes here. So I am going to turn the value here to 16. I think 16 is pretty good. But then I also want to change the ping pong amount. So I'm going to turn the ping pong to just like a 0.2. So now we have much more and they are smaller. And so these white and black values are going to actually make it bumping up and down when we put it into the displacement. Now I want to make this a bit more contrasty, so I can press Shift A, let's go to the search, and I can search for a color ramp, and let's stick the color ramp after the ping pong. And then I want to drag this over so that there is more white, but then I also want to drag the black over just so that there's a bit more black. So it's going to be more contrasty, so something like that. So now you can see we have the white and the black. So I can now mix this into the displacement to make it bumping up and down. So I'm going to press Shift A, go here to the search and I'm going to search for the mix RGB and let's put that before the displacement and then I want to take the color ramp color and let's put that into color one and then this mix right here that is going to go into color two and then I just want to change this to lighten so it adds the light values and I also want to control shift and select the mix so I can preview it and then I want to click on the mix here and I'm going to change this to lighten so now you can see that the noise texture there from this mix it's still there but it's adding those white areas so I can control shift and select the principal shader so you can see it's doing something it's kind of bumping up and down a little bit but I want to make that a bit more strong so I can turn up the scale and if I turn up the scale too much you can see it's bumping out way too much. Um, I'm going to turn the scale to a 0.09. A 0.09 works good for me, but now if you look there on the edges, you can see it's popping up and down, so that is really cool. So you can change the scale around, you can make it stronger if you want, but I find that 0.09 looks really good. And there we have it, so that is pretty much the apple pie, and that is looking very tasty. All right, so I can click right back over here on the layout, and we're now going to finish up the scene. So the next thing that I want to do is the ground, or the table, so I'm going to press Shift S, go to Cursor to World Origin, that way the 3D cursor is in the center, and I can press Shift A, let's go to Mesh, and I'm going to add a plane. And I can scale the plane up just so that it's big enough so that the camera can't see the end of it. So that's pretty good. You can press the zero on the numpad to go into the camera. So I now want to add the material for the plane. Actually, first though, I want to press one on the numpad to go to front view, and I want to zoom in here, and I just want to make sure that the apple pie, the tin is just sitting there on the plane, but that is looking good. You can bring it up and down if you need to. So I'm now going to go back to the shading tab and make sure that you select the plane. And I can click on new here to add a new material, and I can just rename the material to wood. So I'm now going to be adding in the wood texture that I talked about at the beginning of the tutorial, and we turned on the Node Wrangler add-on, so with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, I can select the principled shader, and then I can press Control shift t And when you press Control shift t that will bring up Blender's file browser, and then you can locate to where you've downloaded the textures. And again, links in the description if you'd like to download this free texture from Ambient CG. So when you extract the zip file and go into the folder, you're going to get some different files here. I want to hold down the control key and I want to select the normal GL, also the color, and then also the roughness. So just those three ones, normal GL, color, and roughness. And I can click on principled texture setup. And this is automatically going to set up the textures for us just to save us some time. I would definitely recommend learning how to properly set up texture maps in Blender if you're more of a beginner and you don't know how to do this, but this will save us a lot of time for the tutorial. Now I actually want to change the size of the texture because you can see that wood is quite big. So if I go here to the mapping, I can go to the scale and I can click and then drag down and then I can drag back and forth and that'll change the size of the texture. So I'm just going to turn this up maybe to like a six. I think six is pretty good and that way if you zoom in there you can see now it's showing much more the wood and it just looks like a nice wood table. Now I also want to edit the colors so I'm going to click and drag just to select these 
nodes here and I want to bring them up just so that there's more space between the base color and the principal. And I want to add some nodes in here to make it a darker wood. So I'm going to press shift A, I'm going to go here to the search, and I'm going to search for the RGB curves, and I can stick the RGB curves in between the base color and the principal. And then I want to make it darker, so I can click and drag, and I'm going to bring a dot here, and if I make it down here in this corner, it's going to be darker and darker. I can also click to add another dot, and I want to put this dot down here, so it's kind of rounding down. And then also if I click here on the R for red, I could drag this down a bit because I think there should be a bit less red. And also if I click here on the G for green, I could drag this down a bit so there's a bit less green. And then I want to add one more node in here, so I can press Shift A, and let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for the hue saturation value, and let's just stick that right there. So I want to make it a bit less saturated, so let's just click on this arrow here once to turn it down to 0.9 so it's a bit less saturated. But then I want to turn this value way down, so I'm going to click here on the arrow, and I'm going to turn it way down to 0.1, and that way it's going to be a very dark table. So if I make this bigger, you can see now it looks just like a very dark wood. So just play around with the colors of the wood until it's a color that you like. All right, so we're now going to be creating an object for the steam which is coming up because I want to make the pie look like it's been freshly baked. So let's go right back here to the layout and I'm going to zoom out here and I'm going to press shift S, go to curse to world origin so the 3D cursor is in the center there. So I can press shift A, let's go to mesh and I'm going to add a cylinder for the smoke or the steam. And then I actually want to shade this object smooth, so using the object context menu I can click on shade smooth. Then I can press the tab key to go into edit mode, and I want to scale the entire thing up on the z-axis and just make it taller, and that way we'll have more to work with, so if we want to move this up and down we can, just to kind of get it to the right amount of steam that we want. So I'll press G to grab, bring this up on the z-axis, and I want to stick this right about there so it's on top. So I can now create a material for this. So what I'm going to do is just click right back over here on the shading workspace. And with this object selected, I can click on new to add a new material. And I can also just rename this material to steam. So we're going to be creating a procedural steam material using the volume. So we're actually going to be using the principled volume. So let's press shift A. I can go here to the search and I can start to search for a volume and let's add the principled volume. Let's drop this here, and then I don't actually want the principled, so I can select it and press X to delete it. And let's take the volume and put that into the volume of the material output. So we're not going to use the surface, we're just going to use the volume. And there we go, so already it looks like we have a bunch of smoke there. It kind of looks like there's a bunch of smoke billowing up from the pie. Um, but I don't just want it to be one big cylinder, I want to add a noise texture into the density so that there are just some parts here and there where there's little bits of steam. So I can press shift A, let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for the noise texture, and let's stick the noise texture here. And then I want the factor to be going into the density, so instead of having one density value, the noise texture is going to control the density. If you select the noise texture, you can press control T, and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping, and I want to use the object coordinates just like all the other textures, so let's put the object into the vector. And then I also want to control shift and select the noise texture, so I can preview it. And let's change some of the settings. So I want to turn the roughness up, so let's turn the roughness up to like a 0.7 so there's more roughness, and then let's turn the detail all the way to the max of 15 so it is very detailed. And then also I do want to turn up the distortion, so I'm going to turn the distortion to like 3, and that way it's going to look much more wispy and it's going to look much more like steam by turning the distortion up. But then also on the scale here, I just want to turn the scale to like a 2 because I want it to be smaller. Now I want the steam to be going upwards, so right here on the mapping we can change the scale. So I'm going to turn the scale Z to just 0.5, and this way it's going to be stretching the noise texture up and down, and so that will look more like steam rising up. And then let's actually click and drag to box select these two nodes and drag them back a bit because I want to make the noise texture more contrasty. Because if I unplug the surface, I'm just going to unplug the surface and let go because I don't want anything going into the surface, you can see there's still way too much steam and I want there to be just some steam here and there. So that's why I'm going to make the noise texture more contrasty. So I can press Shift A, let's go to the search, and I can search for the color ramp. And we're going to stick the color ramp in between the noise texture and the principal. 
So I can now drag these two tabs together and you can see as I drag it together, they're going to be more contrasty. And if you want to preview what it's looking like, you can control shift and select the color ramp so I can drag this together. And so where it is white, that's where the steam is going to show up. So I want to drag the white tab over here and the black tab maybe to about there. And then again, for the final material, we don't want to use any surface. So just click and drag and just drag the wire out of the surface so that we're just using the volume. And then if you wanted to, you could change the color here. So you could change the color, but I don't really want to do that because steam coming from food is just going to be white. And I do want it to be very, very subtle. So if you zoom in here, you can kind of see that. You can kind of see it loading up. And I do want it to be very subtle because if it is too strong, it's just not going to look realistic and it's going to kind of look like smoke. It'll maybe look like the pie has been burnt or something or it's been overcooked. So I do want to make it very subtle because steam is just going to be very subtle, but just adding a little bit of steam here and there will look really nice. So just change the color ramp to change how visible you want the steam. And then if you select the object, you can rotate the object on the Z axis and that'll kind of rotate the steam around. So you can rotate it to a different spot if you want to change that. You can also bring the steam up and down on the Z axis if you want to change where the steam is. So you can kind of change that around. So I think I might just bring this up a bit and then I can control shift and select the color ramp to preview it. And I want to maybe make the steam a little bit more contrasty. And then of course you can rotate the steam to kind of get it to a spot that you like. So I'll unplug the surface and that is looking really good. So again, it should be very subtle, just a little bit of steam. All right, so we are almost ready to render this and then we'll do some compositing and get the final image. But one thing that I want to do to make the render look nicer is I want to add a depth of field. So let's go back here to the layout and I can kind of just zoom over here and I actually want to select the steam and I can press the H key just to hide it for now. So I now want to press shift A now let's go down here to empty and I can add the plane axis. And why I'm using an empty object is because the empty object won't show up in the render. So I can press G to grab S to scale. I'm just going to scale this down and I'm going to stick it right here kind of on top of the pie. And this is where I want the depth of field to be. So I can now press zero on the numpad to go into the camera view and I can just select the camera and let's click right here on the camera settings and we can open up the depth of field. And then if you click here, you can find the empty. You could also like search for it. You can also just click right here on the eyedropper and then you can select the empty object. And then I'm going to hold down the Z button and go up into the rendered view to preview it. And then what I could do is just turn the f-stop way down and you can see that taking effect. Of course, that's way too strong. So what I can do now that I've turned the f-stop to 0.1 is I can just click to turn up the f-stop and I don't want there to be too much depth of field, but just a little bit. So I'm going to turn the f-stop to 1.5. I think 1.5 is pretty good. So this way, most of the pie is in focus, but kind of way out here, the table starts to get a little bit blurred. So that is looking really nice. And then I can press Alt-H, and Alt-H is going to unhide that steam object. All right, so we are about ready to render this. I do just want to turn up the render samples so that it'll render with more samples. So I'm going to hold down the Z button, go to solid view. So if you click right here on the render properties, you can open up the sampling. And right here on the render samples, I'm going to turn this up to like 200. I think that'll be pretty good. Um, if that's going to take your computer too long to render, you could turn it down. But if you have more samples, the render will look nicer. And also, if you click right here on the output properties, I want this to be a nice large image. So I'm rendering this out as 2560 by 1440. So that's like a 2K resolution. It's the resolution of my computer monitor. And so I do like rendering at a high resolution. But you could make the resolution much smaller or just leave it as the default of 1920 by 1080. And if if the image is smaller, it'll render faster. All right, so before you render this, make sure you press Control S just to save the Blender file, just in case it crashes or anything. And then to render the image, you can press F12 or click on Render and click on Render Image. And the render has finished. Now, something that I did is actually rendered this, but then I went back and turned down the amount of steam. And this actually might be a little too much steam too. So you might need to go back and adjust the steam. The steam should be very subtle because you're not really going to be able see that much steam unless it maybe just came out of the oven but still the steam will be pretty subtle 
so now let's do the compositing. So I can just click right over here on Blender's compositing tab. And then I can also just click and drag and make this smaller because I don't need the timeline. And let's click on use nodes to use the compositing nodes. And I can drag the render layers back. So the first thing that I want to do is add some color correction. So let's press Shift A. I can go to the search and I'm going to search for the RGB curves and let's put that here after the render layers. And then to preview it in the backdrop, I can hold down the control and shift key and select the RGB curves. That is using the feature of the node wrangler. When you control shift and select different nodes in the compositor, it's going to add the viewer. And so you can preview the pie in the background and also make sure you have the back drop button turned on. And then also you can press V to zoom the background out and Alt V to zoom the background in. So I now want to do a little bit of color correction. So let me just drag this over so I can see the pie a bit better. So right here on the RGB curves, I'm going to drag a dot up here just to make everything a little bit brighter. I'll bring this up like that. And then I can click to add another dot and I'm going to drag this down. So this will just make everything a bit more contrasty and a bit more saturated by kind of giving that curve there. And then I also want to add a small glare. So let's press Shift A. I can go to the search and I can search for the glare glare node and let's stick the glare node here in the wire going to the compositing and I can control shift and select the glare node to preview it. Now I want to change it from streaks instead to fog glow and we'll just wait for that to load up and you can't really see the glare and that is because there isn't anything in the scene which is super bright. So I can turn the threshold down and if I turn the threshold down it's going to use less bright objects as the glare. So if you turn the threshold down to zero, you can see now everything is really glared. So I can now just kind of turn the threshold up and you can see now just kind of that edge there is a bit brighter. So for this scene, a 0.2 is pretty good. You could go like with a 0.3. Um, I'm just going to change it to a 0.2. So I now want to add a vignette along the edges to kind of make the edges a bit darker. So you're going to focus more on the pie. So I'll press shift A. I'm going to go here to the search and I can search for the box mask. Let's stick the box mask here and then I can control shift and select the box mask to preview it and if I drag this out you can kind of see it better so there is a width and there is a height and so I can hold down the shift key and drag the width and height and I want to make this box bigger and we're going to use this box to make the vignette effect so I'm going to make this a bit bigger something like that now I want to blur this because right now it's super sharp so I can press Shift A, let's go to the search, and I can search for the blur node. And let's stick the blur node right here after the box mask. And then what I can do is click, and then I can drag down, and then I can drag towards the right, and that way it's gonna blur it more and more. And you can also type in a specific value, so I'm gonna click, drag down and then let go. And I'm going to change it to like a 600. 600 works pretty well for my scene, um, but you don't need to make it that high if you don't want to. You can just blur it as much as you need. And then back here on the box mask, you can drag the width and height if you want to make it bigger or smaller. But a vignette should be kind of subtle, so just kind of a little darkness on the edges is pretty good. So I now want to mix this in to the image. So I can press Shift A, let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for the alpha over node. And we're going to stick the alpha over node right here between the glare and composite, and then make sure that the viewer node and the composite is plugged up to the alpha over. So I can control Shift and select the alpha over, and now the viewer and composite is both going into it. And then I want to take this image here from the blur and I want to put that into the factor. So the factor is going to tell it where it's going to be the top image and where it's going to be the bottom image. And then I want to take the glare and I actually want to put this into the bottom image. So we're basically using this blur here and the box mask as the factor. So now image one, that is going to be the color of the vignette. So I can click on this white tab and I'm going to make this fully black. And there we go, so we now have a nice little vignette. And I think I actually might want to make the width and height a bit bigger because I want to make it a bit more subtle. So I might just like bring this up a little bit. And also what I could do is I could drag the X over. So if I hold down the shift key, I can drag the X to make my movements more sensitive because you can see right over here, um, the table is much more bright. So if I drag it over, the vignette will be a bit stronger on this side because we've brought the box mask over. And then you can change the blur. So if I like turn this down, there won't be quite as much of a blur, maybe like a 550. So you can just play around with that blur amount until it looks nice.
And then there's just one more thing that I want to do to the compositing. I want to add the denoise node to denoise the image and kind of smooth it out. Because you can see, even though we turned up a lot of samples, we turned it up to 200 samples, it still has a little bit of noise. So let's press Shift A. I can go here to the search and I can search for the denoise node. And let's drop the denoise node right here in the composite. And then make sure that the image is going into the viewer and the composite from the denoise. And then I want to click on the accurate here and I can just change it to fast so it goes a bit faster. And I find that it doesn't affect the quality of the denoise. At least it's not very noticeable. All right, so there is the final rendered image. So to save this final image, make sure the viewer and the composite is both going into the denoise and then you can press the F11 key and that'll take you to the image editor or you can click here on the drop down and you can click on image editor so this was the raw render this is before we did the compositing but if you click here on the render result I want to change this to viewer node and you can really see the effect of the compositing so here it is before and there's the viewer node so it looks much nicer after the compositing so to save this image we can click on image and then click on save as and i will just save this as apple pie and i'll just save this as a png image and i'll just click on save as image and there we go so this is going to wrap it up for the apple pie blender tutorial so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial i hope you're easily able to follow along and thank you so much for watching and if you'd like to help support me and my youtube channel to help me continue to create blender tutorials and content then you can check out my gumroad store and my patreon page and the youtube memberships with the links in the description and you can also purchase the finished project files for this tutorial as well as my other tutorials on my gumroad and patreon so links will be in the description to the project files and as i record this it's almost thanksgiving of 2022 and then of course after thanksgiving comes christmas in december so happy thanksgiving and merry christmas and i hope you all have a great holiday so I hope you found this helpful, happy holidays, and thank you for watching.